Jabulani Kumalo praises the ANC for ousting Zuma and turns back to the MK party leadership. Please do well to subscribe, like and share as we go into the details. The founder of the Umkanto Wisiswi, MK, party, Jabulani Kumalo, was removed, and he has praised the African National Congress, ANC, for its recent decision to remove former President Jacob Zuma. Kumalo called the action a necessary step in purging the party of elements that he claims have undermined its integrity when he made the announcement to media on Tuesday. Kumalo, who was controversially ousted from the MK party leadership last year, expressed pleasure with the ANC's unwavering position against Zuma. It's about time Zuma was kicked out. According to Kumalo, his acts have undermined the values that the African National Congress, ANC, and the larger liberation struggle upheld. A possible return was hinted at by the former MK party leader's declaration that he intended to take back his place within the organization. I am preparing to take over as MK party leader once again. Kumalo said that the party must abandon the corruption and self-serving objectives that have bedeviled it in recent years and return to its founding goal of fighting for the people. Kumalo's comments coincide with heightened political unrest in South Africa as different ANC and MK party factions compete for power. His possible return to the MK party leadership is expected to spark discussion and change the climate in the group. Although Kumalo's route to regaining his position as leader is still unclear, his vocal endorsement of the ANC's resolution to remove Zuma highlights the growing rifts in South Africa's political system. Once more, according to a recent event that SAP's Clement Manuthila reported, Tony Yengeni said that he had spoken with Jacob Zuma over a significant disciplinary ruling rendered by the ANC's disciplinary committee. Zuma, while leading a different political party at the time, is given a crucial role in this choice, which is momentous for both Yengeni and Zuma. As Zuma considers the situation, the consultation raises possible consequences for the ANC, with Yengeni pointing out a 21-day appeals opportunity. Jacob Zuma is the leader of another political group, therefore his engagement begs interesting concerns about his continued relationship with the ANC. Opponents argue that Zuma's involvement in the appeals process could be intended to sow further division within the party. The public's response to Zuma's attitude has been mixed, with some speculating about his motivations and claiming that his actions are intended to sabotage the ANC's internal procedures. Both political observers and party members will be keenly watching the 21-day appeals process as events develop. This timeline is crucial because it leaves room for any objections to the ANC's decision, which might have a big impact on the stability of the party. The exchange between Zuma and Yengeni sheds insight on the intricacies of political allegiances as well as the influence of previous leaders on the makeup of the party today. Social media responses reveal a wider apprehension over Zuma's intentions. While some see his engagement as an attempt to subvert the ANC, others see it as an essential step in correcting alleged inequities inside the party's disciplinary system. All eyes will be on how this scenario plays out and the choices that the parties concerned make as the deadline draws near. The result could have long-term effects for the ANC's unity inside. Public Works Minister Dean McPherson has made the shocking accusation that some KwaZulu-Natal political parties are receiving funding from other criminal networks and construction mafias. The province's political climate has been rocked by this accusation, which has caused grave doubts about the fairness of political processes and government. During a recent news conference, McPherson, who has been outspoken about corruption and illegal activity in the construction industry, made these claims. He made the point that these criminal networks have an impact not just on the construction industry but also on politics, where they utilize their financial clout to push lawmakers to adopt laws and choices that benefit them. Democracy and sound government are seriously threatened by the entry of criminal forces into our political system, according to McPherson. These mafias are trying to take over political parties in order to maintain their unlawful operations, in addition to upsetting the building sector with their extortion and intimidation techniques. In the construction industry, organized organizations that participate in illicit acts including extortion, intimidation, and bribery are referred to as construction mafias. These organizations often demand a portion of contracts and impose their will by violent measures. Their participation, 